Uh, we stand before you as private individuals, Nicholas Stewart and Chris Kohler, sales assistants and library monitors, paper boys and bartenders. We also stand before you as the Lesser Arts, a group of four designers based in Glasgow. And we present to you a project called ACTA, an open-ended publication in a term sitting between ACTA Diurna, the Latin name for the LS newspapers, and the, the anti-counterfeit and trade agreement which aims to curtail digital piracy. The project aims to engage critically with historical methods of publication and distribution and to examine the new forms they may take in the future. Currently we are presenting this talk. To talk briefly about what collaboration means to us, it allows us into the content of our presentation. We would like to make it clear that while we are presenting the project act as declaration, that neither the Lesser Arts nor Nicholas Stewart and Chris Kohler endorse or support this declaration. In fact, it is only by the complex mechanism of a triple identity which allows us to speak these words. Pretending to be an avant-garde design studio, pretending to present a project, allows the idea to exist without us as private individuals having to expend the effort to create it. I'm sure you're all aware of the difficulty that comes with creating artworks, let alone making demands of the culture in which it is to be received. We are never tired, but the lesser arts. We are tired, but the lesser arts never tire. We are lazy, but the lesser arts is never lazy. The project ACTA sits in a space beyond the lesser arts. We have placed it in a fictional dimension, calling from beyond our lives, drawing us towards it. We have named it in order to create it. In a way, it will in turn create the lesser arts. As private individuals, we hope, away to, we hope to come away unscathed, unaffected, and safe. Collaboration is first and foremost, of course, a way to avoid the deterioration of oneself while allowing us the pleasure of one another's fermentation. Collaboration in Scotland doubly so. There are statistics which state that one in ten in Scotland are collaborations, that five in six in Glasgow are collaborations. This includes farming methods, communal living, cleaning rotas, borrowing a book and the exquisite corpse as I'm sure you're aware. Collaboration is the contemplative tax bracket. And it is the heart of the project we will present, again, without the endorsement of the lesser arts, nor the private individuals, Nicholas Stewart and Chris Kohler. We, as ACTA, wish to declare our defiant opposition to time. We are against capitalist time, against all representations of time, against historical time, against time you had a watch, against times on my side, against the time you were leaving, against time, gentlemen, please. The common descriptions of time imagine a straight line along which we walk. This line can be fragmented into hours, minutes, seconds. This vision is, of time is not natural, but is concurrent with the rise of the nation state, the opening of trade routes and the first breaths of capitalism. The anarchists of Joseph Conrad's The Secret Agent attempt to destroy the Greenwich clock. Perhaps if they had succeeded, even fictionally, the system of time as we experience it would be vastly different. In Rilke's poetic novel, The Notebooks of Lord Malta Lord's Brigge, he states, it occurred to him that there must be a public authority, some sort of time bank, where he could at least change part of his miserable seconds. After all, they were perfectly genuine. He had never heard of any such institution, but surely something of the kind would be in the directory, under T, or perhaps it was called bank of time, it would be easy to check under B. Conceivably, it might be under I, since it was presumably an imperial institution as, benefit, as befitted its importance. The tragedy, of course, is that there is no such bank of time, or rather, that there is one, but that it's the Royal Bank of Scotland in their ilk. Our wages represent our lives, deposited and circulated as fictive lives. The guarantee of a mortgage payment we cannot make of a lifetime of work we do not want to do, compiled as a triple A financial package, downgraded to junk status. Under capitalist time, the expected linear route of our lives represents money. And yet these financial products can disappear, reappear, expand and contract. The ruling class already lives outside of the capitalist time we live amongst. We call on all people to live outside of capitalist time. We have no idea how to do this but perhaps we can take an example from the French revolutionary calendar. This was an attempt to rationalize time, cutting the day into 10 hours, renaming the days from Catholic saints and pagan gods to animals, fruits, and vegetables. 
Today, the 25th of Thermidor, meaning summer heat, or in Soviet parlance, the betrayers of revolution. The saint of today is the otter, a playful and communal animal, an architect of sorts. The otter creates nests and mudslides, pavilions, pantries, outhouses. We can learn something from this naming scheme and from the otter. It strikes us as a perfect exercise in satire, as though they were mocking their own project of rationalization as they performed it. Imagine we cut the day into 10 hours. Imagine each hour could conjure tricks. Perhaps each minute could turn about itself. Perhaps each second could fold or split and become two seconds. If we understood it or had a little more time to scour the internet, we would pass, perhaps find that this is the meaning of Einstein's relativity. To quote his letters, it became suddenly clear that time is a banal construct made by parents and judges to make sure you were home in time for your tea, to make sure you turned up to your hearing with the right clothes on. The linear construct of time is in place for convenience and nothing else. It allows us to meet beneath the clock and make plans. And where have plans got us? Goes without saying that ACTA is against all plans which are not convenient to it. We dislike getting text messages saying, where are you? We were supposed to meet an hour ago. Where was ACTA? The private individuals before you were still sleeping. ACTA was amongst the very clouds. There are those who would put forward a vision of cyclical time instead the eternal return of Nietzsche, or the ever same of Walter Benjamin. But this strikes us as a regressive move, a return to a time frame based upon seasons, a time for everything under heaven, for sowing and reaping. In a globalized world, there is no time and all time. It is permanently summer, it is permanently winter. If time is cyclical, then it spins in amongst itself, a ball of wool tangling into a bike wheel, or the cogs of a thousand watches and clocks, bells tolling simultaneously, chiming every hour at once. As Benjamin wandered Paris, obsessed with the decaying ruins of a previous civilization, which he documents in his arcades project, his past began to overlap with that of Antoinette Redier, a horologist and the inventor of the alarm clock. They soon became lovers, but despite having invented the alarm clock, Antoinette Redier did not live to see its succession into the holy places of her culture. As is well documented, prior to the 1850s and the arrival of the Industrial Revolution in France, the widespread use of alarm clocks was precluded by the unavailability of affordable bedside cabinets. Additionally, to leave an alarm clock on the floor by the bed left the risk of reaching instead into the chamber pot. But then, what real difference is there between picking up an alarm clock and picking up a ship? The history of the alarm clock and scatology are intertwined. In his notebooks, Benjamin writes often of Antoinette's experiments with psychotropic plants and refers frequently to the trans-induced epiphany she reached when making the analogy between the inner workings of a clock and the intestines of a human body, and the potential to have time emit from the clock as an alarm, much like a defecation. The romance soon soured as Benjamin attempted to combine the descriptions of her vision with accounts of a Kabbalistic sect who, quite rightly, understood time as an extension of space. Seen as they measured height and depth in relation to hand spans and strides, they measured time by the procession of certain materials through the body. The smallest increment being water, roughly half an hour, the largest being a child, in our terms, nine months. Strangely, they included the procession of words through the mind, requiring roughly an hour for each word. Thus, their holy book, a collage of the Talmud, and almost every text which passed them by them, by including recipes, bus tickets and receipts for clothing was said to represent the entirety of time. Added together, it amounted to about eight years, after which they believed they would enter some other set of dimensions completely outside of both space and time. They believed that these dimensions could be quality of line, depth of colour and ironic distancing. For a penultimate image, we called the ghost of Marcel Proust. At once dead and alive in his writing, in the famous and clichéd anecdote of Marcel ducking the madeleine in his cup of tea and rushing back into his childhood, we call on you not to become Proust, but to become the madeleine and the cup of tea, containing a thousand memories and spilling none, living none, existing to be replaced, to go cold, to go stale, circling death, circling life, a palmipsist, an onion skin, a world within a world never discovered. We call on you to become objects or images. You have the choice. It will, we suppose, depend on which discipline you selected at art school. Your choice has already been made. We put forward instead 
the understanding of time seen in Zeno's paradox, in which we fire an arrow at a target. But in order for the arrow to cover the distance, it must cross half the distance and half of that distance and the infinitely small measurements, the smallest of which contains no movement. But the combination of these no movements cannot create movement. By Zeno's paradox, time and space is an impossible concept. It is our contention that humanity should just stop. Stop mucking about with something it doesn't understand and sit still, for God's sake. Do we have to do everything around here? Can the natural world not pick up some of the slack? The trains don't run in time because they're moving. You were late for work because you're trying to get there. We will all die because we insist on continuing to live. Imagine a tunnel drilled to the center of the earth. They have thrown you into it. They have thrown all of your loved ones in there. They have thrown the whole world in there. You fall as far as the middle. Gravity forces you there. But as you reach the center, the gravity of the opposite side holds you in place. You have been screaming and crying for hours as you fall. But as you slow and stop in the center of the earth, you acclimatize. You set up your record player and your row of books. You cut a few pieces of bread and butter there. Your girlfriend, your boyfriend, plural, your girlfriends and boyfriends. The spectrum of humanity arrives soon after. This is what it is to live outside of time. As you put on a record and dance, you feel the illicit, blasphemous pleasure of time. We will allow this. In the center of the earth, you will be pushed from one direction and pushed from the other, held perfectly in place. Much like a game of snakes and ladders, in which every square is both a snake and a ladder. After the initial throw of the dice, whichever number it lands on will throw you into an infinitely expanding set of movements, which contradict and negate one another. The result being the endless play of the game, with no possibility of death, no possibility of reaching the final 100 square. We call on you to live your life as an endless game of snakes and ladders. We aim to finally exist as actor, a structure beyond the structure we created, the image of a movement without the content. We believe it is sufficient to strike the pose, to destroy these private individuals and exist as increments, as images. We call on you to live impossibly outside of time, in constant confrontation, opposed to linearity, opposed to cyclicality, in the zone of the superimposition of images, to knock the noses and bollocks from statues, to twist the hands from clocks and watches, to run over your allotted 15 minutes. Thank you.